Today I'm gonna to talk about how to retire in 10 years. What you need to know, what the formula is, what are the decisions or the sacrifices you need to make, and what do you need to know before you retire in 10 years? Things that you definitely need to know. If this is your first time at our channel or you haven't subscribed, click on the subscribe button at the bottom. My name is Travis Sickle, Certified Financial Planner with Sickle Hunter Financial Advisors. Getting to retirement in 10 years is a very ambitious goal, but if you wanna get there, I'm gonna show you how to do it. So let's start with the formula. What are the things that you need to know in order to retire in 10 years? Well, here we go. So one thing that we can get right out of the way are, is our time frame, and our time frame for this is 10 years. So let's just go put that up on the board. We have 10 years to get to retirement. Well, we know that we need to save a certain amount, so we're gonna call that our savings rate. And we're going to call it our savings rate because usually this is on a monthly basis. So if we're going to make this on a monthly basis, then it's going to be not only the amount, but also the time frame. So that we'll know that we're going to save X amount for 10 years. So the next thing that we need to know is what rate of return we're going to get. So that is our invested dollars. So we're going to call that our ROR or the rate of return. So if we go out to the stock market, we get a five, six, seven, eight percent rate of return. It's a rate of return. And then we're gonna have our last piece and really the most important is the goal. How much do we actually need to retire in 10 years? How? What's the goal? How are we gonna get there? So let's take a look at this and fill in some of this information for what most people are doing. And these are people that are retiring at normal retirement age, not in just 10 years. So let's say we have a rate of return of 6%. Now that could be more or less, but well, we're gonna stick with 6% for right this second. So we're gonna assume a 6% rate of return and let's just start with something for our savings rate. Let's say it's just $500 a month. Let's say that's what we're gonna save. We're gonna do it for 10 years. So let's figure out what our goal is gonna be. So we're gonna need a financial calculator in order to do this. Now I've done a lot of other videos on the financial calculator, so I am gonna go zoom through it. But if you wanna learn more, go ahead and watch some of the videos on the financial calculator. But if we take this for 10 years at $500 a month at 6% rate of return, how much are we gonna have at the end of our 10 years? Well, let's plug that math in really quickly. 10 years, 6% rate of return. We have nothing saved. We're gonna save 500 per month. That's gonna give us $82,349. Now again, we're assuming that we're saving this at the beginning of every month if you're doing or following along on the financial calculator. So it's gonna be $82,349. Well, clearly 82,000 is not gonna get us to our goal. So we need to make some more adjustments. But this is the basic formula for how to figure out how to get to that goal with an assumed rate of return of 6%. So how do we get there? So this is the formula. Now we're gonna to go to step two, which is looking at the decisions that you need to make in order to retire in 10 years. Okay, if you wanna to get to 10 years, here comes the fun. So here's the decision that we need to make. For step two, it's gonna be the decisions or the sacrifices. So we have two things that are competing in your finances, and this is between savings or the amount that you're gonna save versus your expenses the amount that you're actually spending. So if you're going out and paying a mortgage or you're buying a latte or you're buying whatever, those are your expenses. And your savings, the amount that you put into retirement plan, into the bank, into your investments, there you go. So either the dollar is going to go into savings or the dollar is gonna go towards your expenses. Those are the only two places that we're gonna put these dollars. Now, if you have expenses that are debt, still the same thing, still expenses. Everything else, savings. So let's start with a typical example of someone that's saving 3%. What this means is 97% is going towards their expenses. So let's say that we're making $100,000, simple math, 3,000 goes towards savings, 97,000 goes towards our expenses. So if this is the case right here, we're gonna have to assume one other thing, and that's a rate of return. Because if we're gonna take this money, we're going to invest it. So what rate of return are we going to assume? Well, at this point, we don't know what your rate of return is, your risk tolerance, so we're going to assume a rate of return. So the rate of return that I'm gonna assume is 8%. I'm gonna put that right in the middle. So if we save $3,000 a year at 8%, how many years will we need to save in order to replace our 97% or $97,000 in expenses? Well, the math is quite simple. Let's take a look at our spend down. 
So if we have our total goal and we're gonna spend 5% every single year, then we need to make sure that that's gonna last our lifetime. So we'll take $97,000 and we will divide that by 5%. So that would equal $1.94 million. That's a lot of money that we need to save in order to replace our 97,000. Now, if that's the case, we're gonna work our math backwards at 3%. That's roughly, that's roughly 50 years. That means 50 years of savings at 3% in order to get to here. Now, if we incorporate that match and say this is 6%, we're still gonna cover the same amount, significantly less, then that is gonna bring us 50 years down to just over 41 years. So we've almost saved the whole decade by getting that match, which is obviously something that we're not actively doing. So bringing this from 3% to 6%, but still keeping our 97% in expenses, this 50 years becomes 41 years, or just over 41 years. Now let's say that we bring this up because we really want to get to this 10 year mark. If we bring this up to 25% savings and this up and this down our expenses, because remember every dollar that comes in, it can only go to savings or expenses. So this 97% then is going to become 75%. Because Remember these two percentages have to equal 100%. So because we're saving more, we're spending less, or because we're spending less, we're saving more. So in this example, if we save 25% of our expenses and bring this down, well, let's go back to this first example. We needed to save enough money to support 97,000 a year. But now since we're bringing down our expenses, we only need to replace 75% of our expenses. And 75,000 a year means that we need to save 1.5 million. So that's a little bit less than our 1.94 million. So at 25%, that's gonna be roughly 22 years worth of savings. Now, if we bring this a step further, we bring it all the way home, how do we get to our 10 years? We bring this 25% saver all the way up to a 60% saver. That means we're only spending 40% or $40,000 of our income. Now that is a sacrifice in and of itself. But if we do this and we need to replace $40,000 a year, that 40,000 is gonna be an $800,000 a year or a total goal or a nest egg. So if we have $800,000 at an 8% rate of return with a 5% spend down, then that means we can reach our goal. So that means we can get it, we can get there in under 10 years. So $800,000. That means we can get to the goal right here on 60% saver, 40% expenses, $800,000 total. So I, let's go over this math one more time. I'm going to get rid of all this information here. So let's take this $800,000 and we're going to get a at 5% rate of return is going to equal our $40,000. Now, if you remember our expenses, we got our expenses down to $40,000. So we have $800,000. We're going to get a 5% rate of return. We're going to get $40,000 each and every single year. Now, this savings of $40,000 or this 5% spend down that is a huge feat because we're, we're committing to saving 60% of everything that we bring in. So then the next question is going to come up. How on earth do we live on 40% of our paycheck? And that's where, that's where all this is going to come into play. You have to look at how you can reduce your expenses significantly. But that's the math right there. That's how you're going to get there. You have to make significant sacrifices if you want to get to this point right here. Now, it can be done. People do it all the time and they live in tiny houses. They reduce their expenses tremendously. They don't, they don't go out and eat. They're doing everything possible. So that's an extreme case. Now, if you want to retire even earlier, obviously, you're going to have to save even more. But if you want to know the math, that's the math right there. This is the spend down. Now, if we increase this rate of return, then we wouldn't need to save as much, meaning that we can either save less than 60%. So that's going to change. The percentage changes is what the percentage is going to change with the rate of return that we're assuming. Now, I'm not advocating that you take any more risk than 5% if this is your spend down because you need something that's guaranteed. You need to make sure that you're getting this 5% every year. And if you can't, that means you either have to spend even less 
or save even more. Two of the biggest hurdles when retiring earlier or earlier than 59 and a half is usually when you can access your retirement accounts, it's gonna be healthcare costs. So if you have your healthcare costs answered, then that's one off the list. And the other one is how to access your retirement accounts earlier. Because if you remember, most of the retirement accounts cannot be accessed before age 59 and a half. Now, there are strategies to do it. So it's not off the table, but you want to make sure that you have the right strategies to get access to this $800,000 so you can make sure that you're maximizing it. And this formula is really important because 10 years is different for everybody. Maybe that's when you're 25 or 35 or 45 or 55. It doesn't matter when you want to retire. You just need to make sure that this math works for you so you can make sure that you have the money forever. And the third and most important one, more important than all of them, and don't fall into this trap, is inflation. Now, we didn't account for inflation at all. I didn't do any inflation-adjusted returns today. So you need to make sure that this money is growing and this money is growing. So you're not gonna spend 40,000 today in 25 years from now. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to make sure that this grows enough and your expenses are increasing with inflation. But you can retire earlier. You just need to understand that you need to make significant sacrifices, but you can get there. You can do it. You just gotta put your mind to it and know that every expense that you reduce, you can put it towards your savings. That's the takeaway is your expenses and your savings. So if you want to retire earlier, you have to get to work and you have to start saving significantly more. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and leave your comments down at the bottom.